Hi guys, this is Abhay Talreja and uh, I'm going to be continuing our discussion on how to make your uh, application secure using, uh, you know, simple free tools available so that uh, you can have your websites delivered in HTTPS to your clients. So again, this is my website, HTTPS, uh, coolmoviebytes.com and the last we covered was how to set up the server, how to have your user created, how to get nginx as a server installed and how to get your domain name configured. Now, uh, we're gonna continue our discussion. Uh, the first thing we'll need is the security key, how it works is there is an, a free organization, let's encrypt.org. They do provide certificates uh, for free. So the HTTPS certificates that you see are completely free. And uh, I'll teach you how to do it or how to install it on DigitalOcean. So in this series, uh, we'll go on to the part four uh, you can see the blog post for more details. So to start with, we need to again uh, update our app and as I already did it in part two, I don't think so I'll have any updates, but let's go on and do it again. And it should be fairly quick. Now I'll install Let's Encrypt onto my server out there. and it'll ask me for permission because it utilizes disk space and I say a yes. Uh, it may take a, you know some time for you to install this depending on your internet speed. Uh, I think mine is a pretty fast one, I think 100 Mbps but I don't know what time it'll take. Oh boom, it's done. Okay, so now that you have Let's Encrypt installed onto your system, we need to obtain the SSL certificate. You can use Webroot plugin for doing that so what we need to do is first, if you recollect from the previous session, you had a sites available folder for Nginx uh, as, and then you have a default URL to it. What it does is this is a default file configuration for any of your uh, Nginx server. Now we need to just make sure that we uh, say location well known al allow. You can just place it before the location uh, file that you see out here. Okay, and control X, yes, and enter. That should save the file. Now you need to make sure that you do not have any typo or anything in your file. So for that, you can just check the status of the file using a hyphen T. What this will say is this will verify the syntax in your files and it'll say everything works successfully. Then you can reload the Nginx server uh, using this command, reload command. And again, if you recollect the documentation provided in the previous blogs, you would be able to do that easily. Now comes the real moment of obtaining a certificate using the Webroot plugin that we just got installed, uh, that uh, we just set up. So uh, first thing is just copy this command and paste it. Make sure there are two hyphens because I remember while doing a practice before the session, I had these hyphens combined into one during the copy paste and it caused a problem. For me, again, I am gonna do it, uh, change the example.com to my domain. Again, for you, if there are more domains and subdomains that you support, make sure you include those as well. So it's easier. You don't have to do it every time. So www and without any www are the very basic ones. But I do have uh, another domain that I need, which is for a game. So if I do game.coolmoviebytes.com, it'll work for me. But for now, I'll let it be because that's a separate server altogether. And I press and enter. It'll give me a blue screen. You can put in your email ID. Uh, I'm just going to hide it for me. The system will just use this uh, email ID to contact you if in case there is a problem or the license is getting expired. So once you do that, it uh, gives you all this information and it says invalid response because the website that I have is already been deployed and it's pointing to another server. So I need to make sure that I update my A record so that this uh, ping can result successfully. Okay, so I had an issue with the DNS because my website is already on. So I just go and update this uh, to give you guys a demo on how it works. 
of course that can cause my site to come down but let's go give it a shot and i save it so i am using godaddy as my provider so uh, everything is at godaddy now uh, i go back to my system and just run the same command again and it won't give me the blue screen for email etc but i think it should uh, successfully ping my system and okay so after a couple of tries because i think the a record takes a lot of time to get adjusted uh, the certificate was successfully installed onto these uh, locations you can see uh, and uh, everything is pretty much set for me my certificate is installed now the next step is to make sure that everything works for me so uh, what i can do is i can quickly check on how everything is by uh, checking the live um, url that you see so in my case i have it as cool movie bytes so i'll just put in cool movie bytes dot com okay everything worked so cool movie bytes is officially uh, uh, all the certificates are working and everything got created and again everything free of cost now uh I did read about it uh, about Diffie Hellman group. Uh, there's a strong algorithm. Every time, every time you need to, you know, it's recommended that you install it, and it just takes one command to do it, and it's at security. So to be honest, I don't know much about what it does, but it just takes a few minutes. You can just execute this command, and it adds uh, dhparam uh, security. Now, uh, again, if someone knows what this is, please do comment in the comments and. I'm sure if you read through on the internet, you'll find the usage of doing it, but uh, it's a plus if you do it. So the key is created for us and everything looks good for us. So <clears throat> we have already installed the free certificate and got the security in place. Now we need to tell our NGINX server to know that there is a certificate existing. So what we will do is we'll first create a snippet about our SSL keys and certificate into a location. Then we'll configure a snippet containing the SSL into the, so that we don't have to do it in the future. We also adjust our server blocks uh, so that, uh, you know, the SSL request can have two snippets above. So first thing is let's go and create a configuration snippet. Again, it's very easy. You just copy this step. And it has to be in the snippet folder, but that has been taken care of with the command that I have shared with you. You can just do a coolmoviebytes.com and everything should work for you. So now that the file is created, we copy these command onto our uh, file so that it's there for us. And I can just do a control X, say a yes on a save and then exit. Now uh, let's uh, try to create a configuration snippet with uh, stronger settings so what we do is we go on to the uh, configurations for the snippet and uh, again there is a lot of write-up around it uh, but what i basically understood about this these are some configurations that you can set up for an ssl and they are based on uh, cipher.st as well as you know there are very good geniuses who have done the research around security so uh, I think they recommend a few uh, default settings. So we do have the default settings. Uh, however, there is uh, there are a few changes that I just did. So uh, let me quickly just go and create open this file that we have and copy and paste this. So again, everything should be fine. Again, I researched a lot before coming on to this one, but you can see the preload was uh, active. In our case, I just disabled it. That was one. And I think I changed the resolver IP out here. So these were the two changes from the default that you see uh, that you will follow the link. And of course I added the DH param out here. I do a control uh, X, save it and exit. So that should take care of that file. Now uh, you need to adjust the configuration for Nginx to use SSL. Again, you have to do that on the default file. You can always do a backup of your file. So it's easier if you want to go back. So I just created a backup with this command and now I'll go and edit the actual file so that I, even if I lose something, I don't have to worry about it and I don't mess up my server. But again, as this is a new droplet, even if we delete and we have to do it again, it's just time consumed, but uh, we learn a lot too. So this is how it should look like. Again, nothing has changed except the location that we had added earlier on. So it should be still here. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to change this to add these three lines. 
at the start in the server block and again there is a server name below we'll also disable that but let me quickly first add this one So by default it would have been example.com but I will change it to coolmoviebytes.com and www.coolmoviebytes.com Again so I just changed it from cool uh, example.com and example uh, www.example.com to coolmoviebytes.com and www.coolmoviebytes.com Also as you note that we added a server name up here which means we need to disable a server name below there which has a hyphen here. Okay, and we also need to disable the root root variable that we added. Now we need to add another server block for our HTTPS, which is always on the 443 port. So let's quickly do that. And again, this is where we will use our snippet configuration that we created. So if you see, there is a server block that has been starting. Uh, so here, there's a server block that starts. And here is where it ends. So I will create another server block. And I will copy paste what I got. Well, of course, this will be duplicated. SSL configuration, HTTP. I just need to change the example.com to coolmoviebytes.com. And I save it and close it. So one thing you need to uh, see is now I am disabling everything and moving. Uh, so if you see carefully what we are doing here is we are uh, forwarding the request that comes as HTTP onto uh, you know uh, this request which is the HTTPS. So even if the user types in HTTP, they'll be moved to HTTPS. But uh, uh, optionally you can allow both. And the way to do it is move everything in here. If you can see and it should work for you so there is this optional block again i don't need this but if you need to uh, facilitate both you can go ahead and do this now again that we have now that we have created we initially allowed engines to have only have the full access uh, for http but now we may have to give access uh, you know take that access off because we want only http in my case but if you need both you can allow both so let me just exit this Copy and paste, it'll give me the current status. So I'll first remove is, first allow is the ng-inx4, which means it'll allow everything for both. Again, the quotes are a problem. Make sure you uh, take care of the quotes when you copy and paste. It's the editor, uh, I'm sorry for that. Medium, okay. And now when you check the status, you should see everything to be allowed full, something like this. You see that? Now, again, validating our configurations is correct or no. It seems to be successful. Everything worked well. Output should be something like this. And then we just restart our Nginx server. This should restart it. Now, uh, to check on how your security has turned out to you can just copy this link and replace your website with this. What this will do is this system analyzes your website for all the potential uh, risk and uh, best practices. Uh, this may take a while uh, as it's a long list, but once it completes, we can come back to it. So moving on, uh, setting up auto renewal for Let's Encrypt. So of course, this is always a pain because the certificates get expired in about 90 days. So uh, after 60 days, you'll basically have to, uh, you know, renew it and you can't renew it before 60 days. Now how to test it, you can just type in renew and it will tell you that you already have the latest. You don't have to worry about it. But if in case you don't, uh, ha you forget and things like that, you can set up a cron tab. Cron tab is basically on your servers. You can set up, uh, you know, automation on how to run. You select the editor which one you want by default it's the two. I'll just paste these lines. What these lines will do is it'll renew it and after you know um, so 
what this will do is it will set up a, a cron job that will uh, you know every monday go and check around 2:30 a.m and reload ngings at 2:35 a.m with the new certificate if there is a so it will just give a span of like 5 minutes and then if the certificate is renewed it will renew it and then in 5 minutes it will reload the ngings server so that you can go ahead uh, you don't have to worry about it so that was about uh, setting up the certificate and engines and again let's go back to the certificate results that we wanted to see as you can see your security is turned out to be an a plus which is fantastic and you can optionally test the security before you do all these steps so you know what's the difference that you have uh, or the benefit you get and again everything happened free of cost you did not have to spend a single dime all you had to use uh, was the knowledge which is there available so i hope this tutorial helps someone on how to do it now from this point on what we will do is we will go on and create uh, a configuration for meteor application so that uh, meteor apps can be deployed onto it and uh, i have a meteor application like coolmoviebytes.com is completely based off meteor i'm not reloading this page otherwise it will just go off woof because we changed the server for it but uh, in the next part what i'll do is i'll have my meteor application coolmoviebytes.com deployed onto this new uh, new server that we created and have it hosted from there again i will of course delete this droplet and revert back to what i had before just for the security concerns <laughs>